Tonight, the final face-off before Florida voters choose. A presidential race that's breaking all the rules comes to a state that wrote the book on election cliffhangers here in Florida. That's how important Florida is. Only one thing is certain in this contest. Expect the unexpected. You have three candidates who have won three primaries. You're going to have to make a decision. Which of the three should become our nominee? I think you know, yeah. Tonight, the candidates together in Jacksonville, Florida. Newt Gingrich, the South Carolina winner, hoping to capitalize on his recent victory and his strong record in debates. It's not that I am a good debater. It is that I articulate the deepest felt values of the American people. Mitt Romney, the New Hampshire winner, trying to broaden his appeal and reclaim the title of frontrunner. We're not choosing a talk show host. We're choosing the person who should be the leader of the free world. Rick Santorum, the Iowa winner, looking for a new burst of momentum after his upset in the heartland. There was one race that was in nobody's backyard, and we won that race. Ron Paul, still in search of a win, a fierce competitor with a die-hard following. We have the determination, and we will win this battle for peace and prosperity. Now, the 2012 Republicans in Florida. It's the biggest battleground so far, and this could be the most important debate yet. From the University of North Florida in Jacksonville, this is the Florida Republican presidential debate. Tonight, the four Republican candidates are here to tell us why they're the most qualified to take on President Barack Obama. I'm Wolf Blitzer. We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. We also want to thank our co-sponsors, the Republican Party of Florida and the Hispanic Leadership Network. Members of the Florida Republican Party are here in the audience with us, and some of them will have a chance to question the candidates. In addition, our sister network, CNN en Español, is standing by in Miami with members of the Hispanic Leadership Network who will also have a chance to question the candidates. Viewers can send us questions online. On Twitter, make sure to include the hashtag CNN Debate. On Facebook at facebook.com slash CNN Politics. And of course, on CNNPolitics.com. It's now time to welcome the 2012 Republican presidential contenders. <laughs> Joining us on stage, Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Thank you. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. The former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. And the former U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania, Rick Santorum. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican candidates for President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem performed by the University of North Florida Chamber Singers.
Please take your podiums while I tell you more about how this debate will work tonight. I'll be the moderator, and as I mentioned, our partners from the Republican Party of Florida and the Hispanic Leadership Network will also ask questions. I'll follow up and try to guide the discussion. Candidates, I'll try to make sure each of you gets your fair share of questions. You'll have one minute to answer, 30 seconds for follow-ups and rebuttals, and I'll certainly make sure you get time to respond if you're singled out for criticism. Now let's have the candidates introduce themselves to Florida voters. Please keep it short. Here's an example. I'm Wolf Blitzer, and I'm thrilled to be here on the campus of the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. Senator Santorum, let's begin with you. I'm Rick Santorum, and I'm thrilled to be here on the campus of North Florida. <laughs> and, and I'm especially thrilled because I'm here with a North Florida resident uh, who lives right down the, down the beach from Jacksonville. My mom, who's 93 years old, is with me here tonight. And... Uh, I better just stop right there. <laughs> I'm Newt Gingrich uh, from the neighboring state of Georgia. I'm delighted to be in Jacksonville, which will be the site of the next nuclear aircraft carrier battle group. I'm Mitt Romney, and I'm pleased to be here with my wife and my oldest son, Tag Romney. We're the parents of five sons, five daughters-in-law, 16 grandkids, and it's great to be back in Jacksonville. Thank you. I am Ron Paul. I'm a congressman from Texas, 12 terms. I am the uh, champion of a sound monetary system, a gold standard, as it is under the Constitution. <laughs> and a foreign policy based on strength, which rejects the notion that we should be the policemen of the world and that we should be a nation building. We need... All right, uh, let's start with a question from the audience. Hello. Can you tell me what specific actions you'll take to address the costly consequences of illegal immigration while preserving the rights of those who seek to immigrate legally? All right, Senator Santorum, uh, let's take that question. But also in, in the course of that question, express your opinion on what we heard from Governor Romney that self-deportation or illegal immigrants leaving the country voluntarily is a possible solution. Well, the, the possible solution is, I actually agree with Governor Romney. The bottom line is that we need to enforce the laws in this country. We are a country of laws. People come to this country. My grandfather came to this country because he wanted to come to a country that respected him. And a country that respects you is a country that lives by the laws that they have. And the first act when to come to this country is to f disobey a law. It's not a particularly welcome way to enter this country. Uh, what I've said is from the very beginning that 
it, we, we have to have a country that not only do you respect the law when you come here, but you respect the law when you stay here. And people who have come to this country illegally have broken the law repeatedly. If you're here, unless you are here in a trust fund, you've been working illegally. You've probably stolen someone's social security number illegally. And so it's not just one thing that you've done wrong. You've done a lot of things wrong. And as a result of that, I believe that people should, no law, should not be able to stay here. And so I think we need to enforce the law at the border, secure the border. Secondly, we need to have employer enforcement, which means E-Verify. And we need to have not only employer sanction, but we have to have people who are found who are working here illegally. They need to be deported. That is, again, the principle of having a rule of law and living by it. I am very much in favor of immigration. I'm not someone, my dad came to this country, and I'm someone who believes that, pe that we need immigration. We are not replacing ourselves. We, have, we need not only immigration for, uh, to keep our population going, but we need immigration because immigrants right. bring a vitality and a love of this country that is, infuses uh, this country with, with great energy. And so I support legal immigration, but we need to enforce the law. And in fact, if you don't create an opportunity for people to work, they will leave because they can't afford to stay here. Uh, Speaker Gingrich, uh, you've suggested that self-deportation, as advocated by Governor Romney, is, in your words, an Obama-level fantasy. Why? Well, look, I think that, first of all, you should control the border, which I have pledged to do by January 1 of 2014. You should fix legal immigration in terms of visas so people can come and go easily, more easily, than doing it illegally. You should also make deportation easier so when you deport people who shouldn't be here, MS-13 gang members, for example, it should be very quick and very clear. You should have a guest worker program, probably run by American Express, Visa, or MasterCard, so they minimize fraud, which the federal government won't do, and you should have much stronger employer penalties at that point because you can validate it. I actually agree that self-deportation will occur if you're single, if you've only been here a short time. And if there are millions of people who face with that would go back home, file for a guest worker program, and might or might not come back. The one group I singled out were people who have been here a very long time, who are married, who may well have children and grandchildren. And I would just suggest that grandmothers or grandfathers aren't likely to self-deport. And then you've got a question. I, I offered a proposal, a citizen panel, to review whether or not somebody who'd been here a very long time, who had family, and who had an American family willing to sponsor them, should be allowed to get residency, but not citizenship, so that they would be able to stay within the law, but would not have any chance of becoming a citizen unless they went back home. I don't think grandmothers and grandfathers will self-deport. Governor Romney, the few times, and I think it was only once, that they experimented with self-deportation, only a handful of individuals voluntarily left. What makes you think that, that program could work? Well, you've just heard the last two speakers also indicate that they support the concept of self-deportation. It's very simply this, which is for those who come into the country legally, they would be given a, an identification card that points out they're able to work here. And then you have an e-verify system that's effective and efficient so employers can determine who's legally here. And if employers hire someone without a card or without checking to see whether it's been counterfeited, then those employers would be severely sanctioned. If you do that, people who've come here illegally won't be able to find work, and over time those people would tend to leave the country or self-deport. I don't think anyone is interested in going around rounding up people around the country and deporting 11 million Americans, or 11, excuse me, 11 million illegal immigrants into America. Now, let's look at, and I know people say, but isn't that unfair to those 11 million who are here and have lived their lives here and perhaps raised children here? But I think it's important to remember that there are three groups of people that are of concern to us. One of those that have come here illegally, the 11 million. The second is a group of people who are brought over by coyotes and who are, uh, in many cases, abused by virtue of coming into this country illegally. And the third are the four to five million people who are waiting at home in their own nations trying to get here illegally. They have family members here asking them to come here, grandparents and uncles and aunts. Those are the people we have a responsibility for. And the second group as well, those that are being abused, we're, we're concerned about them. Let's focus our attention on how to make legal immigration work and stop illegal immigration. All right, uh, Governor Paul, uh, excuse me, Congressman Paul, you're from uh, Texas, the, the state with the longest border with Mexico. Is this a viable option, what we just heard? Well, I, to talk about it, but I, I don't see it as being very practical. I think it's a much bigger problem. I, 
you can't deal with immigration without dealing with the economy. The weaker the economy, the more resentment that there is when illegals come in. If you have a healthy, vibrant economy, it's not a problem. We're usually looking for workers. Even under today's circumstances, a lot of businesses are looking for workers.